Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Today, Thursday, the 11th of February 2021, is the International Day of Women and Girls in STEM, and that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The United Nations set this day aside on December 22nd, 2015, as a day to celebrate women, to recognize their critical role in the development of STEM fields, and to promote equal access to and to participation for women and girls in STEM fields. We've now invited Timmy Tokpe Bolaji, the founder of STEM Zone Nigeria, to discuss this with us. Good morning. Good Are morning. You? Yes, thank you for joining us again. So first things first, I want us to talk about the societal and cultural factors that basically limit the entrance of women into STEM fields. Yes, um, uh, it's very difficult for women to choose a STEM career just because um, of a lot of major factors. They lack inspiration, they lack empowerment, they lack connection. And we do not see many people in STEM, many women in STEM celebrated. We have the media, we have movies, depicting um, people in STEM as men. Primarily, if you want to picture an engineer, the picture you have in your head would be a picture of a man, in, in white jacket or with, uh, with a hand emmet or something like that. But women should, and media should begin to project women that are doing a lot in STEM so that girls and young girls like, like um, young girls in high school, young girls in university, young girls in primary school, starting from primary school, they begin to picture themselves as someone in STEM. Okay. Um, I saw an article yesterday uh, about um, um, Veku that they, they said that, um, that we do not have women in autonomous um, feed because seat beds would not have been um, designed that way. When I was pregnant, I could not even use my seat bed because um, of my pregnancy and my busty situation. So, uh, and people say that if women are projected or many people, women are in STEM, then definitely um, seatbelt will not be um, designed that way. We also lack empowerment. A lot of um, programs are not designed for women in STEM. We should begin to design programs. We have a, a program presently in STEM Zone Nigeria where we train women in artificial intelligence and tech related skills. I wanted to you know, ask about the um, uh, locally, um, here in Nigeria, uh, do you think that there's a lot of young ladies, or share with you know us, you know what the percentage really is like? A lot of you know the young um, um, women in Nigeria who truly are interested in science, technology, um, engineering, and mathematics as uh, STEM. Um, 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 well, that's what STEM means. Um, is there a lot of interest really in that space? Okay, presently we have less than twenty-five percent of the women population as. Um, women in STEM, and we have a lot of men in that field. There's already a preconceived notion that women are, sh should not be in that field. There's a stereotype that women are not meant to be in that field. So I, the stereotype presently push women back from um, taking that field. So um, presently, there's very little percentage of women in STEM. Okay, um, I remember sometime last year or two years ago, I, I did a feature on about five women who, five young, very young girls that are into STEM. They worked at Andela. They were software engineers, you know, they were into machine learning. They were doing amazing stuff. And one of them told me that she was really interested in science and tech, but her people told us to go and learn fashion designing. Not like you, that's a bad thing or so. But I want you to um, emphasize this, especially for the benefit of parents who are watching about how educating their children and exposing them to alternative careers in engineering and tech can actually you know, promote this field. Okay, I'm someone that gets um, a lot of comments like, oh, you are a genius when I mention that I'm presently doing my PhD in physics or I founded a tech company. I hear stories like oh, people telling me that, oh, they definitely does something different you are actually doing something different. I'm not doing something different. I'm actually doing something I love. So I need um, people, people should inspire more young girls to do what they love. 
we have um, a lot of toys that are uh, Barbie toys and doll toys for, for girls, and we have little construction toys for girls. So um, we need to tell girls out there that you should not, you are not your gender. Um, the stereotype is not for you. You should actually break behind that um, stereotype and begin to see yourself as someone that can actually do something much more. I started my, um, my company, the tech company, when I was just out from school, 19 years old, and I actually um, went into STEM feed when I was 14. And it's, it's not as if I loved STEM or science from the beginning, but I saw a lot of people doing wonderful things in STEM, and it's actually inspired me me to see myself as someone that I can break barriers and do something different in this field. Now, right. talking about that, your, your, your company, Stem Zone Nigeria, it says that you aim to, to empower 100 girls yearly with skills in STEM. How is this project coming? Um, we presently have a club for girls called STEM Dames. So we bring together girls and we train them, train girls from the local community here, and we train them on how to use um, tech skills and how to build a lot of um, projects that could solve global problems. We have, um, last year, the, one of our girls actually built a face recognition um, machine that can detect whether you are having a skin disease uh, just through your picture, and it could actually detect whether um, what kind of disease you're having, whether eczema or pimple or pimples or any kind of disease. And we've been doing that for some while now. We've been training a lot of girls yearly on this project, and we have girls actually um, trying to be more because of this project. Wow. I, right. I want you to touch more on what you just mentioned, you know, to tell me more about girls that are, you know, learning tech skills, science skills, you know, from STEM Zone Nigeria and some of the most remarkable achievements that they've, they've accomplished through the learning and the training that they've gotten from your STEM Zone Nigeria, you know, establishment. Okay. Um, um, I started STEM Zone um, just because I saw that the Nigeria educational system is really doing little in training um, people for the future. We have courses in school that are not preparing us for, for solving a lot of global problems. We have a lot of problems in Nigeria from the from bad role electricity problems. We have so many problems, including economic and political problems. But our courses in school are not actually preparing us and preparing young minds for that future. And that is why we started STEM Zone. We train kids and young minds yearly on how to prepare themselves for the future. So um, I basically, I love teaching and I love inspiring young girls because I believe if we have more young girls in STEM, then a lot of these products that are, built are going to be more beautifully and creatively um, designed. So the project started here in Akure on those states and we've moved to other states. We are recruiting girls to um, learn a lot of test skills. We train these girls on skills from web development, um, software development, artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics. And presently we designed, we are designing kits and toys that girls can actually um, relate to and actually um, that can support their, their interest in this field. So the, we have a lot of young girls from the age of five to 18. These girls are actually doing a lot of interesting stuff here at STEM Zone. And we've been doing a lot of projects. We, we, uh, we also go for competition, international competition, where these girls are, are, would represent the company and Nigeria. We go to schools also to train kids on these um, tech courses. So um, the plan was to train girls yearly on just 50 girls. But when we saw that um, the number of girls in Stanfield are actually so low, we decided to increase the number to training 100 girls yelling on STEM fields. All right, um, tell us about where the, where in 2021, um, where do you think that the conversation needs to change with regards um, girls in STEM field? Um, and of course, uh, at what point do you think that we need to start, uh, you know, letting females um, actually get into those or into that space if that's where they truly want to be? 
um, because right from you know childhood there's already you know gender stereotypes that almost immediately push uh, young ladies in this, in a certain direction. And so, where do you think that we need to start to make a you know have a different conversation uh, with regards involving more females in in STEM? I think we need to personally address the preconceived notion and um, judgments that these careers are wholly STEM dominated. We need to start to introduce women and that are doing great stops in, in tech careers. And I think this will inspire more girls. And we also need to um, build more on the mentoring aspect. We have to mentor a lot of girls instead. We have to empower them. We have to connect them to opportunities. There are some girls that don't actually know that um, there are courses that could also inspire their artistic nature. At first, when I was told that um, that science would be good for me, I was like, you, uh, it's a boring stuff. Uh, an artistic self like me uh, would actually not um, fit into this course. But gradually, as I went in, into science courses, I saw that this is actually for me. And it's actually at my artistic nature. I love writing, I love drawing, I love designing stuff. And in that feed, I, I could do a lot more better in that. I could design a lot of things, build, construct a lot of things. I saw a lot of um, projects that are designed just because of my artistic nature. So we need to tell girls that um, you don't, um, fashion is good, it's good for you to love fashion, it's good to uh, love how to um, make up, it's good for you to know how to do all those stuff. But it doesn't mean that you cannot go into an engineering feed, a science feed, a, a feed, a tech feed, or a math feed. So, so, so should, should there be a change? Them that they are more than their gender. Yeah, sure. So should there be some adjustments with you know, our curriculum, our policies from primary to you know secondary school Definitely. that, are, that um, you Definitely. know allows more females to get into STEM? Because um, you can't really. I don't know if you can also tell at what age a child starts to show interest in certain directions. Um, so you can guide that that child. So. Um, should there be some changes in the policies that guide our, you know, uh, primary school curriculum and, uh, you know, the, the, the guidance really of the kids at that age? Yes, definitely. What um, I tell educators is that you should not only look at um, um, what their skills or their a child skill, we, you should also look at their passion. What do they like doing? So when you look at kids and see what they like doing, there are a lot of us, right from when we are young, we like, um, <laughs> our parents will say is a, a destructive ability. But actually, I see that as a creative ability. Um, we started a Kids Creator Academy where we look at creative abilities for kids at a young age. And we channel that creative ability into um, a wonderful um, skill where they can learn how to things, destroy things, and at the same time create interesting projects. So I want the curriculum, um, we, we designed a curriculum, a STEM curriculum in school, where they don't only teach theory, they also practicalize, they do project-based learning. So I believe that if all courses in school, especially from primary school to high school, are now project-based courses and courses that um, help them um, build um, solutions to problem. I believe that that would um, inspire a lot of kids. They don't. They won't see those courses as just um, theoretical aspects that they cannot apply to real world application. But the moment they start applying these um, theories in class to real life applications, then I see that um, this will actually build a lot of interest in STEM. Hmm. Um, talking about the coronavirus pandemic, I've read several articles about how, you know, women-led nations and even female, females in, you know, the STEM field have been fighting uh, COVID-19. What would you say has been an impute of women generally <clears throat> regarding, you know, fighting this pandemic? Uh, now more than ever is an exciting time to work in the STEM field because anyone who could take up challenge and participate in um, solving problems are going to uh, be projected into more limelight. So 
um, we saw a lot of women that did wonderful stuff from the medical field to those um, in the forefront fighting coronavirus. And it's, it's actually inspiring for me, although I would have loved to go into uh, medicine, but I found myself in, in feces and I've loved it ever since. So um, those women that are fighting, they've been fighting um, coronavirus, I had a um, story, there's a Loki story about a, a woman scientist who actually gave a lot and well, I had the story that she later died in the course of um, treating this disease, but she actually saved a lot of lives because she could easily identify um, um, those that actually uh, got coronavirus through a tech device she built. It was an artificial intelligence device that has been connected to phones there in China that where they can detect where each coronavirus patient has been. And from there, they could build a um, network that could um, detect who um, a coronavirus patient has been in contact with. And that actually stopped a lot of spread of the disease. And this is actually inspiring to me because I presently in the field of machine learning and intelligence artificial intelligence and it has been inspiring to me and um, we are trying to do a lot of stops where we can um, do a lot of um, uh, solution or take product that would help in the health feed in regards to coronavirus. Wow. Are there are any current campaigns that have been run or you, you know, hope that, you know, will be started uh, to send this conversation down to the grassroots and to let people um, as um, far and you know across Nigeria in particular, uh, to understand the you know the fact that women and girls can get into the STEM field. What campaigns you know are currently being run? Okay, we have um, a lot of them. We have some from international organizations where they come to train girls here in Nigeria. We also have local um, organizations that do a lot of great stuff in training women and girls in STEM. We have um, women in STEM, women in tech. We have, have um, international women in tech community. We have a lot of STEM clubs that are for women in tech. So um, these clubs are locally and um, also internationally available to girls to participate in their programs. We joining these um, clubs, we actually help these girls to learn more about tech. They will see a lot of opportunities. There are a lot of careers in STEM from product development from to tech to um, mathematics to engineering courses that would be an interesting aspect or interesting career a woman should go into. So we have a lot of communities and they can also check up some of our communities here in Nigeria. Um, we have the STEM zone girls um, it's a club, a weekend club for girls. They can join virtually where for free they will be trained on any tech course they want to um, go into or on, on, on any tech career they want to go into. So, so is the campaign really to increase the number of females in STEM or to let people understand that, you know, these stereotypes need to die um, that has reduced the amount of females that have been able to get into science and technology and, um, and mathematics. What exactly would you de describe the campaign or the main purpose of the campaign? To increase the number or to let more females feel okay. more comfortable um, if they choose, if they realize that that's their passion and they want to get into that space? There was a survey that was done for girls in, um, in high school and they actually told them to choose courses they would like to go into. And we saw that just 25% of them who could choose that or even know that they can go into a STEM field. So the campaign is um, starting from, we are going to start from scratch, telling them that um, we, you can go into a STEM field. You can be an engineer, you can be a mathematician, you can be a scientist, you can be a developer, uh, you can be a programmer. So that uh, is the campaign for now. Then gradually we begin to introduce them to see opportunities they can um, access in a STEM career or careers they can go into. So the campaign has been going from um, schools to schools, 
we started in Ondo State telling girls that they can um, actually choose a STEM course. They don't know. Most girls don't know that. They believe it's a male-dominated field. And most of them um, don't want to even be the few in those classes. They like to blend in. So we want to tell them that you can be different. You can mm -hmm. choose a STEM career. You can stand out among your peers. So from there, we introduce them to these courses and we teach it in such a way that they see the beauty, the artistic side in, in this course, because I, I know girls love art, um, artistic um, stuffs and fashion and a lot of things like that. So we start, we start from teaching them animation, teaching them game development, teaching them um, digital storytelling. Okay, um, you mentioned something earlier that when we think of an engineer, we think of a male clad in white and maybe a helmet. We don't really think of you know, that figure of an engineer being a woman. So what would you say would be the role of female uh, techies, you know, the role of women in tech as role models to these young kids? And which women in tech, both in Nigeria and globally, would you say you look up to and would recommend other, other young girls to follow you know, to look up to as a role model uh, that they can also thrive in STEM fields? Okay, um, I have a lot of role models I look up to, and these um, women are doing a lot of great stuff that are doing in the STEM field. We have a lot, um, we have Odume Weniyi, the co-founder of Paystack. I actually am in love with that woman because she started an invest investment um, firm presently that's is going to um, give funds to women that, as I word said, ridiculously early women in tech. So uh, there are a lot of a lot. It, there's um, little opportunity for women in tech. They have little access to funding, and she's rewriting their story together with Elo. She's rewriting the story and giving um, a lot of opportunity and investment um, fund to women that are starting in tech. I have a, um, some of them in the artificial intelligence field that are doing great stuff, that are inspiring um, a lot of girls in this field. I have um, Ukidare, uh, the N Edo Innovate um, and Edo Jobs um, coordinator, who is giving a lot of opportunities to women in tech and innovation. So. And we have a lot of them internationally too that are doing a lot of great stuff that are inspiring. And I believe that um, girls should, if you want to follow people in um, STEM, you can just check on online. You see a lot of them and okay. um, a lot of history and mentors you can choose from. Thank you. Right. You mentor Odunai Owini of Piggy Bank. Yes, okay. yes, Bank, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tamita Kwebolaji, the founder of STEM Zone Nigeria. We really appreciate this discourse, you know, celebrating women and uh, talking about increasing participation of women and girls in the field of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Maybe if I, if I'm not, if I wasn't a journalist, I would have been something Probably I would love to explore. Yeah. You know. You know. And um, thanks once again for stopping by and for speaking with us. We <laughs> hope that the campaign uh, continues to be successful and we can have more females feel more comfortable uh, get, getting into that space. All right. Um, uh, we're going to, of course, uh, go on a short break. You know, but before that, you know, just to quickly mention, you know, I. I I feel like there's a lot of work that needs to be done from the, you know, the teeth in stage, you know, from the family, from our primary schools, from you know, even, you know, nursery schools. Um, it can be exactly sure at what point the child starts to pick interest in certain directions. Uh, but, you know, it's very important that, you know, women need to be told that it's okay if their child doesn't want to back, uh, you know, a barbie. Um, and cook, you know, food with sand at that age. Maybe she wants to do something different. Maybe she wants to actually play with, uh, you know, toy cars. And it's fine. Um, you don't always also need to force a girl to like pink. Um, um, it's also fine if she wants to like something different. So th these are, you know, conversations that might be difficult to drive down the throats of Nigerians. 
Um, but they're important that we start to have those conversations. I know a lot of a lot of uh, females who are amazing in uh, information technology and and tech. Um, and so um, it's it's unfair, you know, that we have this stereotypes, this gender based stereotypes that continue to just you know reduce the number of people who actually get into that space when that's what yes, truly excites them. True. Um, I mentioned earlier that I did a feature on about five girls who are thriving in tech, and one of them told me that this male friend of hers told her that he would die the day he sees her work in a tech firm. That's because she was doing something totally unrelated to tech. Now she's a thriving software engineer doing her own thing. Absolutely. And she said she's still waiting for the guy to die. So prove people wrong, girls. If you want to thrive in STEM, if that's what you're after, but show it all, all of your hearts. And you know, you never know who you might be inspiring as you go about pursuing your own dreams. Absolutely. Uh, we will come back and of course we're going to be talking next about transnational rail lines, the Nigeria Niger. Um, a rail line that, of course, is still being built or still being set up. You know, how much you know benefit is that going to bring to us as a nation, and of course to the Africa Free Trade, uh, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. Some of all of that um, I mean, in those discussions. Why did we need to take a loan that big to set up a rail, and how much would that benefit us? We'll talk about that when we come back. <laughs> 